time tonight. He won't be looking for you next week. Um, thank you for being, asking me here again tonight. And it's all, um, Our Lady Perpetual Help is always um, very close to me. I have great faith in Our Lady. But in the picture of Our Lady Perpetual Help, it shows Jesus running into the arms of his mother after getting a glimpse of his future and how he would die. It also shows two archangels in the picture carrying symbols of the crucifixion, his death. If anyone here tonight got the wake-up call and knew how they would die, I'm sure we would all be turning to Our Lady for comfort and, per and the perpetual help that she offers. I'm also sure she would support and guide us the same way she did her son. Donal knew this love and he understood it and had complete faith in the love of God, whom he believed would not let him down. Donal often said to his friends, God has me in the palm of his hand, and when I die, I'll be in his arms. His faith and belief in this never swayed. Even after he was anointed, the priest, Father Padraig, asked him, Are you afraid of dying, Donal? And Donal replied in a very weak voice, No, Father, just a little nervous. But Donald, being a modern-day teenager, had the latest mobile phone and all the other gadgets. But in his phone was a photo of the Divine Mercy and the Creed. And I think that just shows his confidence and faith in a young person's way in today's world. We as a family were no different from any of you here today. Just to let you know one or two things about us at the time. Donald's dad lost his job about six months after Donald was diagnosed with cancer, when he was first diagnosed with cancer and was out of work for about two years. That was in 2008 when the crash came. I had stopped look working before that to look after Donal. So we went from a, being a two-income family to being the two of us being on the social welfare with a very sick child, all within six months. If I was told this a year before that I would be dealing with such a sick child and such a drop in income, I don't think I would have been able to cope. But when you're in the thick of things, you learn to cope fast. And I think that's the help of Our Lady of Perpetual of Help. Donald was like any teenager of 16 years of age. He chanced his arm as often as he could. And I suppose one of those things was with a fake ID. Now, when I questioned him about this fake ID, he said, Mom, think about it. I'm not going to get a chance to go into nightclubs and do all the things that all the young people will get a chance to do. And so how could I argue with that? There was no arguing with that. But when he did ask for the third house party, I did say, Donal, I don't care if you are dying, you are not having another third house party. <laughs> but he knew what it was to live life. He knew from fighting cancer three times, being in and out of hospital, having care various chemotherapies when he was 12, and radiation, that life is very difficult and to be so cherished when and while you have it. He also knew what it was to play in his local GAA team, and won the, win the under 12 county championship that year. He was from Kerry, so it meant, meant a lot. And he knew what it was to come off a rugby field feeling sore and knee deep in mud. He knew what it was to cycle and feel the wind and the acceleration at speed coming down Moll's Gap. And he loved to jump off Fina Pier into the Atlantic Ocean. He was like any young boy of 16. He loved his music and he loved his food. His favorite being the drums, and his food was who could say no to pizzas and ice cream. But he knew from experience that life was tough. He knew what it was to be a teenager in today's world. The pressures that young people can be put under, the confusing and disorientated thoughts, everything from their school exams, their faith, doing well in sports, social media, the latest clothes, the latest gadgets, and the list goes on and on. But like a lot of families, we told him no when it came to sports clothes and the latest gadget and those things. But while he was a very special boy to our family, he was just an average 16-year-old boy getting on with life. He tried to make the most of the life he had left with his friends. And even when he knew the cancer was terminal, he would hear of local suicides, now so common in every town in this country. And that's what led him to write his pieces on suicide, which by pure chance were taken up in the lo local newspaper and then a week later, Brendan O'Connor picked up on it, and that's how Donald was asked on to the Saturday Night Show. That's what started everything. Donald was only 19 minutes on television, and as a result of that 19 minutes, 
11 years ago, I'm here today. He was like any young boy. He had compassion and he understood people's fears and worries, especially those of his own age group. But he could also see that with a little help, they could overcome these confusing and disorientated thoughts and feelings by talking. Talking to a parent, an aunt, an uncle, a teacher or a friend, or phone one of the many organisations like the Samarathans, Pieta House or Jigsaw. They all have open doors, ready to listen to any of your issues, and they're all freely available. Suicide is a short-lived urge, and with this in mind, we need to let children, and unfortunately, we need to let everybody, but especially children, but unfortunately, the children that are looking for help are as young as five and seven years of age now, so I'm told by Pieta House. If we can get this, we need to let them know, sorry, we need to let children from a very young age know that in Donal's words, no matter how bad life gets, there are no reason bad enough to make them do this. If they slept in it or look for help, they could find a solution and they need to think of the consequences of what they're about to do. If we can get this message out at a young age where young people and teenagers can speak freely and openly in a non-judgmental way, this, we feel, would be a key factor in promoting positive mental health. I know Donald died from cancer, and I know what I had to do to keep him alive with some form of independence. I know I had to get doctors and medical teams to do their best for him. And even though I know all that, I miss him every single day. So I can never imagine what it's like for the parent of a child to take their life, because they don't have that six months, they don't have that time to say goodbye and to make plans. So if you know of somebody who's upset or stressed, please remind them again in Donald's words. So please, as a 16-year-old who has no say in his death sentence, who has no choice in the pain that he's about to cause, but who would take any chance at even a few more months on this planet, appreciate what you have, know that there are always other options and help is always there. Everyone's life is both important and unique. When Donald was first diagnosed with terminal, he asked for three things from me. The first was to receive Holy Communion every day, and he did. And he had a routine of prayers that he said, which included the divine mercy. And he was never shy of ta talking to his friends about his faith. Actually, as a result of Donald speaking out his, about his faith, some have said that Donald has made bring, praying cool for them. But others seem grateful to have Donald as a link that brought them back to prayer. The second was to get dressed and out of the house every day, even if it was for a short while. He also did this, and mostly it was just to check in on those he knew who needed a little help or a chat. And the third was to die with a clean spirit. I have no doubt that he did this, and, a result of his legacy is, and as a result, his legacy is still living on even 11 years later. Donald's message was a simple one, really. It was aimed at teenagers. But when it went out, others took up the challenge too, and that is to live your life, the life he knew he would not be able to live. He saw the great support and the good things he was leaving behind in life. The only negative he had in those last few months was in leaving behind all those beautiful things. Look, here was a 16-year-old boy who could have given up very early on and stayed in bed all day, and nobody would have blamed him for that. But God gave Donald a challenge and he took it on. He asked his peers to appreciate life and to live it. I know Donald lived his faith in the last... Sorry, I know Donald lived his faith and in the last 11 years, others saw it in him. Because in those years, Finbar and I had been asked to speak in thousands of schools and churches and clubs. And we only go where we're asked. We've never asked anyone... We have never asked anyone to attend their event. The reason I believe we are asked to talk to so many events is to give hope to people because Donald was a teenager who, when he was on television, gave hope and love to so many people. Although aimed at teenagers, his message was taken up by people of all ages. They saw the love Donald had for his peers in wanting them to live full and fulfilled lives, and they saw the hope and love he encouraged everyone to have. I'm reminded of Donald in his simple but yet deep faith that it's up to each of us to bring God with us through life and to continually nurture the love, strength and graces that God has given to us. 
and to renew our own faith and love in God and in the, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, whose novena we have come to tonight. Now, like all mothers, and especially a Kerry mother, I have to leave the last word to my son. Donal wrote a letter, as I said, he was last on to the Brendan O'Connor show, and this is letter is why he was last on to the show. And when I'm coming up the country, I notice there's a fierce lack of mountains. We have a lot of mountains in Kerry compared to you, and we must get it all down to climb a few mountains. And Donald wrote his letters based on mountains and God. He said, I live in a part of the world that's surrounded by mountains. I can't turn my head without finding a bloody hill or a mountain. And I suppose those were God's plans for me, to have me grow up around mountains and grow climbing a few too. And that's exactly what I have done. I may have grown up around them in body, but I have fully grown and matured in mind climbing his mountains. He's had me fight cancer three times, face countless deaths and losses in my life. He's had my childhood dreams taken off me. But at the end of the day, he's made me a man. I'm always called brave, heroic, kind, genuine, honourable, and so many other kind compliments. But I have to try and explain to everyone why I seem to reject them. I have never fought for anyone but myself. Therefore, I cannot be brave or heroic. I've only been kind because my religion has taught me so. And what impact would I ever have in the world if I was fake? Or how would I ever be honorable if I was not honored to be here? I am me. There is no other way of putting it. Little old Donald Walsh and Tralee. One body, one mind, and a few other cobwebs and tails thrown in. I've climbed God's mountains, faced many struggles for my life, and dealt with so much loss. And as much as I'd love to go around to every fool on this planet and open their eyes to the mountains that surround them in life, I can't. But maybe if I shout for mine, they'll pay attention. If I start to accept these compliments, I'm afraid of what I become. Will I be braver than ye? Will I be kinder than ye? More genuine than ye? Better than ye? More honourable than ye? No. I can never accept there is a ye. We are all the same. We're all given one body and one mind. The only difference for me is that I'm looking from the mountain. Donald Walsh. Thank you. Thanks, Emma, for telling us so much about your inspirational young son and teenage son. But I think the faith that he had is very obvious and clear to us that he got it from you too, from your faith, which um, I think shone out for us tonight as well. So thank you. Um, Emma has um, founded an organization, Live Life, um, to support people who need help. And at the church door, she's brought up a little wristband for anyone who would like to have it on the way out. And also a lovely little card um, with Donal on the front and some of his lovely words. And at the back, a little prayer to Our Lady of Knock, because every year um, <coughs> Elma goes to Knock um, each May to um, speak to young people from all over Ireland. And our young people have gone on a number of occasions as well to, to um, support them on their life's journey as well. So... Um, can get that on your way out as well. So again, thanks, Elna, for that. So please stand now as we'll have our prayers of the faithful. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Dennis, and all church leaders that the Holy Spirit